Uh, hi everyone. Thank you very much, Sam, for the special invite to speak today. Um, I'm going to try to make this as a very comfortable and conversational talk because over the years I've realized that's the best way to relate to everyone and it's helped me as a person grow. Um, so a few months ago I had opened up a blog called Instructions Sold Separately to talk about my experiences with motherhood, with marriage, with my education, my career. And in the past five years that my husband and I have been married, our lives have changed a lot. Um, from uh, abruptly moving to a whole new state, understanding ourselves, understanding being married to each other, um, then having a kid and not having family around to kind of help you or guide you through you know, all the struggles of parenthood and my husband being a resident was around very much. So it was a very l large strain on us to try to understand everything that we needed to understand and provide everything that we wanted to provide for our child. And so second time around, when I had my daughter, I got the hang of things. <laughs> um, but with Musa, who's my special guest today, um, he gave me pretty much a run for my money. Um, at an early age, we noticed, uh, especially my husband pointed out, that he might have a speech impediment because he started cooing a little bit later his coups were a little bit different, and we have speech impediment problems on both sides of our family. So I was kind of very aware of it, and I did a lot of research, a lot of reading about things to kind of look out for, things to help. And as a parent, you always feel that you're not doing enough, and you always feel guilty that you're not providing enough. And as a, mo a new mom, you want to do as much as possible, but with your limited sleep, and your limited time to yourself, it's hard to think clearly of what it is that I need to do aside from my day to day, like I need to clean and wash and groceries and whatnot, um, and still try to, you know, just keep them in order or have a routine. So it was very hard for me to juggle and try to understand what was the best method for him to learn and not be behind in anything. And we had agreed one. Uh, when we decided to have children that we only wanted to institute Arabic as a primary language until they entered school where they were able to balance both languages. Because English, it's easier to pick up than Arabic. And so, and we both had grown up learning Arabic and reading Arabic, and so we did any book that I had for him that he had gotten as a gift or that I had bought was immediately translated. So my Arabic got better because of him. <laughs> Um, so any storybook that he had, whether it be Dr. Seuss or something more complicated, uh, it was translated to my best of my abilities. And so since his speech was delayed, I realized that I needed to not focus so much on the storytelling and the imagination, but focus on concepts that every kid should know. Colors, letters, sounds, animals, shapes. And so I switched over to books and uh, material that I created at home where he can use tangible items to, uh, to identify these things. So he knows shapes and he knows letters and he knows sounds and he's able to identify them in any type of atmosphere. And um, that has helped ease the path for his sister who's picked them up very easily. So my method included books, puzzles, and we do do screen time, we're not opposed to it, but the screen time was very structured to um, Arabic and it had to be videos that related to the things I was teaching him. So he knew his whole Arabic alphabet by watching these videos and he knew how to make the sounds from the middle and, you know, and notice what they looked like. So these are things that it would be a little bit harder for me, but when you add a song to it, he was easier to memorize, and every kid does that. That's how we learned the ABC song, too. So um, that has worked, but then around two years old, when he had mastered all those skills, he got very bored. And all the skills for a child, uh, you know, physical skills and whatnot, he had mastered them. So I had to really start figuring out what to do, because he was too young for preschool, we didn't have family around, and, um, I went back to that phase of really doubting myself as a parent, um, really trying to do as much as I can uh, with the limited resources that I have. Because 
unfortunately, in Arabic, there's not many books out there unless you go back to the country and try to find them that are equipped uh, to help your child. So um, I created a curriculum at home for him. So I um, went to Michael's on a mission. Um, I got a bunch of different crafts uh, that related to the next stage of what he needs to learn. And I based this off of working in a school system for so long. Um, so I worked with kindergartners mostly who are autistic, and so they had learning disabilities and behavioral disabilities. So that kind of helped me. That kind of helped me uh, understand how to kind of break down the curriculum. So in kindergarten, they learn about rhyming words and they learn about you know different letter sounds and whatnot. So um, and that's what I did. I started breaking down the kindergarten curriculum, but at his level and slowly working it up and challenging him more as we moved along. So I like to find, either make the resource myself, whether it be a book or an activity or a puzzle of some sort and make sure that's in Arabic. And now once he had turned three, we decided that we're gonna slowly implement English just because he's going to be ready for preschool and we don't want his language to lack. Um, and so he's picked up the English alphabet as well, and numbers and whatnot. And he, he's doing fine so far. But what I found most interesting about that is that as a parent, there is no time off. No yes. time, no time. It's okay. It's okay. No. <laughs> oh, where did he get out? Oh, as you can see, so doing a talk like this, um, and I haven't done talks or been in the public eye for a very long time. Um, and once I had my children, I decided that the most important thing is just to focus on them. And, um, and what I realized is that um, I, as a parent, you have to have time to yourself. You have to have time for yourself to be able to be patient. <laughs> And to be able to take opportunities such as these to talk to other, you know, parents uh, who might be struggling for the first time, or you know, just want someone to relate to them to kind of ease that pressure. Be like, okay, I'm not the only one. And um, I thought for a long time that I was the only one, you know, going through it, um, because there is a slight judgment when you talk to other moms. You you feel like. If you're not put together and if you're not perfect and if your kid is not on the scale exactly where they're supposed to be, then you as a person, you as a parent is lacking and there's something wrong with your child. And you either become defensive or you become jealous or you become guilty. And I tried to not to fall into that because my circumstances were very different and um, a lot of my friends had partners that were there that were able to spend more time or break up the time between children and whatnot. My husband unfortunately was a resident and they did not have time and um, and when he did have time he tried but most of the work landed on me and that was something you know that we knew that was going to happen and it's fine it's just a matter of kind of recalibrating every once in a while and talking with your partner and kind of saying like, okay, these are my concerns. Um, this is where I'm at as, as an individual. This is where I am at with, with my kids. Um, I need an hour to myself, <laughs> something of that nature. And it takes a lot of self-consciousness to accept that we do need help, that we don't always know what we're doing is right. And um, it takes a lot of talking to your mom <laughs> because your mom will help you and um, it's, and I think the number one thing that I realize is that we have to do what's right for our family structure and what's right for my kid and what's right for him or her is going to be the best for us. So I don't concern myself with like, oh, her son or her daughter is doing one, two, and three and I'm going to feel bad about my child. My child knows other things and our circumstances are different and I have to be comfortable in my own skin and let my child be comfortable because they can sense that too. They will sense when uh, mom or dad are getting aggravated when they're not doing something that they're not used to doing because they saw someone else doing it. So the jealousy card does not being played. 
but I do admire other parents who have learned different tactics for discipline, for instance. Um, I do look at others to see what works and what doesn't, but not in, um, not in awe of them, but in more of a learning experience, because I think that's what parenting is. It's, uh, it's learning the relationship that you have with your child, because um, if you guys have seen the movie The Prophet for Khalil Gibran, mm -hmm. there's a beautiful poem in there. I think I watched that part three times where it talks about how your child is really not your child. And that line by itself, it takes, you, it takes your breath away because you realize they really aren't. As soon as they enter school, you don't know what they're thinking. You don't know what they're experiencing. You don't know what they're feeling. And as a parent, uh, it's scary because they really don't need you as much. And if they do need you, you're not there for them. And so um, you try as much as possible to equip them with all the material that they need. So whether they know the entire encyclopedia of whatever, it does not matter if my child is not emotionally intelligent to understand where he uh, knows how to correct another person's flaw or how to correct his own, or if he's being mistreated, what to do and what not to do, versus just, you know, well, I know this and I know that. Or to be um, arrogant about it. Because they, they can learn that pretty easily, you know. Um, so, um, <laughs> and so um, I, I've learned a lot in my journey, and I have to say that even though my husband is not, you know, a 50 50 uh, parent in that. He is a 100% spouse in the sense that he always helps me to see where I'm at and where I want to be and how to get there. Because sometimes it's hard for us to navigate our own selves. So being a mother, 